Hi everybody, welcome back to another very exciting Adobe Live. My name is Jesus Ramirez and with me today we have Sean Riken. Hey Sean, how's it going? What's up, how's it going everybody? I am very excited to be on Adobe Live again. It should be fun. We're going to be covering a lot of stuff today. So, Awesome. It's going to be a fun-filled uh, fun day with Photoshop <laughs> compositing. Now, before we get started, I quickly want to go through some housekeeping items. First of all, if you're watching from YouTube, make sure that you head over into behance.net slash live because we won't be able to see your comments. So if you want us to see your comments and interact with us, make sure that you go into behance.net slash live so that we could have a conversation. Second of all, make sure that you submit your work onto Discord for the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge. We just saw our good friend Paul Tranny working on a caricature um, Photoshop design. Um, Sean and I are going to review those in about an hour and a half. So make sure that you submit your work onto Discord. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you can go into um, let me share share my screen here. Uh, that is that my screen? That is my screen. And there we are. Make sure that you go into behance.net slash challenge slash Photoshop and click on community chat to bring up the Discord page. And you can see here the caricature that Paul was working on just a few moments ago. It looks awesome. So Sean and I are gonna go through those um, in about an hour and a half. So make sure to, make sure that you submit your work. Awesome. So, Sean, tell me a little bit more about yourself, who you are, what you do, in case people watching don't know who you are. Yeah, of course. So, um, my name is Sean. Uh, I'm a Canadian. <laughs> Which <laughs> and is... you're in Canada. We're not. We're not right next to each other. Yeah, we're not right next to it. as much <laughs> as cool as as you know this setup is. We are uh, we are actually across the world right now. But um, but yeah, it's uh, I'm from Canada. I um, I do a lot. Of, I've been doing composites for around maybe around 13 years now. Mm -hmm. Um, fully self-taught. Uh, I did go to college and stuff for it, but uh, I learned prior, and uh, it was just—it's just a lot easier to to learn this kind of stuff by mm -hmm. yourself. Yeah, found that it was just a lot easier to, for me to pick up on it. I started in photography, and then worked my way into the editing side of things. Awesome. And uh, now I'm here <laughs> on Adobe Live. So, on Adobe uh, Live. That's right. Yeah, and also, um, thank you guys for joining us. I see that we have a lot of people in the chat from all over the world. Um, uh, uh, Sean is in Canada. Which part of Canada are you in, Sean? I'm just in Toronto there, Toronto. Uh, actually. So, yeah, I do see a few people from uh, Toronto there. Yeah. So yeah. hello, everybody. Awesome. Montreal, too. Nice. Yeah, nice. yeah. I'm in a San Francisco Bay Area, so we're in complete opposite sides of the continent. <laughs> Um, You're getting Cody, nice yeah, um, Lindsay, hi, Daniel, Cody Bear, thank you for being here, Anna, as usual, Steve, a lot of familiar faces. It's super cool that I do, you know, the daily creative challenges and a whole bunch of different Adobe Lives, and I see a lot of familiar faces all the time, so it's, cool, uh, it's good to see you guys. We got Marcelo from Brazil, we got uh, Marsha from Toronto, probably your neighbor, uh, maybe, you know, <laughs> maybe you know Marsha. Awesome. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> we, we got Steve from New Zealand. Uh, awesome. Ryan from Scotland. Wow, yeah. we got a lot of people here today. We got a yeah. whole world. <laughs> the whole world is here to learn some Photoshop. Some Photoshop. Um, that's right. That's right. So um, do you want to get started? Should I switch over into your screen? Yeah, sure. Let's do this then. Here we Let's go. Let's do it. Sean. All right. Here we are inside of Photoshop with Sean. All right, perfect. So I'm just going to um, kind of explain where I got this photo first. Um, normally, I like to use um, Adobe Stock for all of my imagery. Uh, this one I actually use Unsplash for. Um, uh, I use a lot of um, Pixel Squid, which is another tool that I uh, use in my composites. Mm -hmm. This is um, 3D imagery. So you're able to um, move all the perspectives and stuff in any way that you want. I don't have to crop out any PNGs today. Yeah. Um, so no masking. And, yeah, <laughs> and uh, no masking. Well, we're gonna be doing masking. Um, I I always do masking. I love masking. Uh, that non-destructive editing is literally how I do things at all times. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, no. Uh, we're basically going to be attempting to do a reflection piece. So it's going to be a mirror of an object uh, reflected back at them in like a different perspective. Cool. So we're going to start by arranging our elements. And I always arrange all of my elements first before I start, just so that I know that like all the perspectives align. So this is just me bringing a simple um, object right now into Pixel Squid. 
and uh, see how easy it is just to move in the same perspective of, as a floor. So now that's matching the floor there. Mm -hmm. Pretty easy. Like it's uh, the actual like mirror itself. We're going to be masking that out. So right now it is very overly contrasted, but that's okay because the light is actually coming from that direction anyway. So nice. this is actually correct. Like you would actually see this being like fully highlighted at this uh, angle. Yeah. So, so one question, Sean, for those of you, for those in yeah. the chat that don't know, like what is pixel squid? How do they get it? What's, what's the deal with that? So pixel squid is like a, um, it's basically just access to a uh, three year or not, sorry. It's basically access to a huge library of 3d elements. Okay. So these are all stuff created from uh, on turbo squid and all that stuff. And they've, imported it into a website where now they give you this Photoshop plugin where you can easily bring in any 3D elements that you want to um, that are offered in that library. So sometimes you might not find exactly what you're looking for and you might actually have to cut it out. But most of the time, like for small objects such as a mirror and stuff, um, I don't want to be cutting out a mirror because it's, it's a reflection itself. So mm -hmm. I would all, all already have to even cut out like the inside of the mirror too mm -hmm. this is just way easier for me just to use a 3d element in this sense Makes you could sense. probably also do this in um in dimensions as well mm -hmm. right like you said that you were in dimensions recently you might be able to do this stuff as well in, in dimensions using like adobe stock and all that right right nice uh question mm -hmm. from marcia do you um do a sketch first for your composites <clears throat> i i personally don't do a sketch first i mean like i I can, but um, the sketch that I will put down is will be so bad <laughs> that uh, I'm not much of a like a traditional artist. Right, right. So when it comes down to um, pre-planning my pieces, mm -hmm. I do plan like bigger projects. Like yes, but when it comes down to a small composite like this. I'm not going to um, go too much in depth with it because mm -hmm. I've already done it a few times that I know how to do this technique and okay. um, and yeah, it's pretty fun to uh, and I've I've done it with like water mirrors everything so at mm -hmm. this point I probably wouldn't but yeah for something more like serious for sure definitely do some like you know process work even if like you you're not the best drawer like you, your client can still see the idea before um, right right before you know you, you launch it nice we got Paco so, in the house hey Paco good to see you what's up Paco how's it going <laughs> so we're just gonna bring in our uh element here and basically I'm gonna completely rotate this guy around okay um the reason is is because he's going to be the one reflecting like in the mirror itself. So at this perspective, we really don't need to see like his face or anything like that. This was most likely probably done, designed in Adobe Fuse and mm -hmm. then brought over. We were just uh, yeah going over that earlier probably. Yeah, um, um, Paul was working with, I don't know if he was working with Fuse, but he was showing it. He was doing some stuff with AR, I think, Adobe Air, if I'm not mistaken, earlier in the uh, streams this morning before the Daily Creative Challenge. Mm -hmm. How how do you get ideas for your composites without a SketchUp? That is a good question. Um, I actually uh, already kind of visually see the ideas in my head. Um, mm -hmm. This is just something that I've learned with like photography. Um, you just kind of already. Um, I I always was pre-planning the shots that I was going to take and the perspectives and the angles and everything. So I can already imagine kind of like my the rough idea of what I'm trying to achieve. It's not going to be the full idea, but um, but I'll roughly get like what I'm trying to do. And then after a while, you know, you just start playing around with it again. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you can't plan the whole thing out. Like, you, you're going to you could halfway through your creative process all of a sudden be like, oh my goodness, I could have done that the entire time and then switch like completely, right? Right, right. So, so that's why I don't like to do like too much planning with this kind of stuff because I'm still using this as like a passion project. And, mm -hmm. you know, this is just my passion just to physically design stuff all the time. And uh, especially stuff like this, like this is just stuff that I don't make profits off of or anything. I just post it because... Mm -hmm. It's art, and it's what keeps my my mind sane. <laughs> so, uh, so I like the I just use it as a relaxation kind of thing. I think I've always just been kind of that creative type. 
I think a lot of people in this chat are as well. Oh yeah, no, for sure. Uh, yeah, it's just, it, it, and I like the the ability that like it gives you, like the software gives you so much to work with, right? Mm -hmm. And you can you can achieve so much now. Like all the stuff that I was thinking of when I was a kid, all the imagination, everything, I can now express that and show people what I was thinking, right? Without saying like, oh, there's a giant monster in the <laughs> air, right? <laughs> right, <laughs> so right. Going like, no, there isn't. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so now I'm just going to flip this because it's at a different angle. So I'm mm -hmm. going to just keep it at, at this. So it kind of looks like it's, you know, reversed the, the opposite side of the room. It's not similar right. to any of this. And then as you notice, the lighting is all coming from this direction. So this window right here will actually be all highlights. Oh, I'm going to go in here. And like, it doesn't have to be perfect because it, it is inside a, of a mirror. So I'm just going to quickly um, mm -hmm. just draw over that. So uh, Dominic is asking, can you explain the last step with the reflection? With the reflection, yeah. So what I basically did was <laughs> I just um, duplicated the, the bottom layer here. So by holding the Alt key, you can just drag your layers and it, and it will duplicate for you. And wherever you want. And then I right clicked and I created a clipping mask. And what this does now is it takes that image and and puts it in the element that you have below, which would be the front of the mirror here. Mm -hmm. um, and then what I all then all I did was I just did transform and flip horizontal to give it that opposite room perspective. And then we're just using the corner of the image, which is right over here and this is probably going to be blurred in the actual piece itself so um people won't be focused on this corner nice so you won't see like a duplicate content or anything but yeah and then you have to keep in mind that like the lighting direction is coming from the windows in the back so if you are taking a picture of a window where light is shining directly at you it will become completely like white and 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 you won't be able to see any detail behind it mm -hmm. so as an example here it's just going to be like it's very rough but this is all going to be blurred at the end anyway so this is something that i just kind of like quickly go over and we're going to be covering up this section here so i'm not worrying about that right now can you explain how to open photoshop <laughs> <laughs> double click <laughs> double click on and the photoshop icon <laughs> yeah, this little blue thing up in the top corner, click that. Um, but yeah, so now I'm going to bring in our skeleton figure here, which is kind of at a, a similar perspective. And then we're going to um, just bring that in the actual mirror itself here again. And now let's put it at the same perspective our guy is standing at, which would probably be around there. And then I'm going to decrease the size. And I just want to remind you guys, if you're watching from YouTube, make sure that you come over into behance.net slash live so that we could see your comments in the chat. Once again, behance.net slash live. And also in about an hour and 15 minutes, Sean and I are going to be uh, doing a design or um, the sign feedback for the Daily Creative Challenge where Paul worked on a caricature project. Super cool. So excited about that and can't wait to see the work that you guys create. So make sure that you submit that into Discord. Beautiful. Yeah. Show us your pieces. We, I'm gonna, we're going to go through them. Uh, so I'm just going to increase the, <clears throat> the lighting here a little bit again just because this was very bright, this side of the room. So you're going to see a difference in the mm -hmm. lighting. Perfect. There we go. That that'll basically be my act like my perspective that I'm going to be using. So now that I've kind of set up all the elements, now I'm just going to nudge them more into my actual frame. So I'm going to probably put this piece here, which will create my actual focal point, my overall focal point being like center. Mm -hmm. And then this guy will it's like leading lines. So it's directing you straight to this by using the lighting on the floor. Right. Kind of like pointing at it now. So 
that's that looks pretty good to me. Now we're going to basically uh, start to blend everything in. So this guy has a shadow that goes forward like that. So mm -hmm. I I'm gonna attempt to try my um, my my cheesy kind of technique first, where I where I rem do the whole flip shadow, and if it doesn't look like it's the best perspective, then I draw it. Um, Cause sometimes you might be able to get away with uh, some some things. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna just make this pure. Uh, I'm just gonna go into the image uh, hue and saturation here, and then we're just gonna make this just the lightness all the way down negative 100. And there we go. There's our little shadow. Now I need to figure out how to get it in the same perspective. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so we're gonna flip it this way. Let me see if let me see if we can actually get it at the same perspective first. So. Transform, flip horizontal. It requires a little bit of tinkering. Yeah, no, for sure. And then I just go into the the perspective uh, after, and this is kind of where you you start mm -hmm. playing around with all the the perspectives of it. We're gonna I'm gonna erase the tops of the shoes off after because you're not you're not gonna see the tops of them. Mm -hmm. And the cool thing about this particular scene is that you already have shadows that kind of help you figure out where the shadow should be. Yeah, exactly, right? So it's like pushing it like in that same with the leading lines now. I'm mm -hmm. basically just following all the shadows with the leading lines. Yep. So I'm going to just grab my actual just warp here and then now I just warp it into into place. You can use puppet warp for this, but I'm not gonna go, like puppet warp can be like really tedious or something like this. Mm -hmm. So that's why I kind of just technically I just use this one normally. Uh, just gets it nice, nice and over with. Nice. All right, and I'm gonna put that underneath the mirror, and let's bring that corner in again. So it's starting to get there. Yep. And that's the thing um, that I usually tell people. A lot of the, the techniques that, you know, I show, anybody shows is, um, you know, like it's actually quite simple. The The real magic happens when you start spending time fine-tuning the smaller details. You could have just exactly. said, hey, um, use the um, warp tool and warp it into position and you could have been done with it. But the real magic happens when you spend, you know, the minutes or hours just making sure you get it just right. Yeah, just like that, that smaller, like little, little tedious kind of work. Yeah. So I'm going to kind of, um, so the blur of the, of this shadowing here, mm -hmm. as how like it's already quite blurry and that's just a, a straight line. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to treat this at, similar to that and I'm going to keep these edges all blurred here. Um, this is still a little bit thin in there, but I can just go in here with a, a brush after and just go up here and fix that. So it's, it's not too bad for, for what it is. So I'm going to keep it, I'm going to make it at around there. Perfect. And then we're going to erase back here now. So I'm going to, I always like to work with a very, very small brush setting. So mm -hmm. if you watch any of my enhanced lives, I do um, them weekly. Um, I, I'm always working with like the absolutely lowest brush settings just so that I can go in and get give myself that like actual control that right. I need with right. work. Because you wouldn't see a shadow here technically anymore because that, that mirror would be in the way. The mirror is going to technically dominate that shadow. So mm -hmm. I'm going to try and remove the head completely so that it doesn't force too much blacks in the back here. Right, right. Okay, perfect. And then I'm going to just go around the edges here. And I'm going to put it up to 100% uh, because I'm completely erasing something. I don't have to get like tedious or anything with this. Mm -hmm. I'm just completely removing all the excess stuff that I saw at the back here, aligning it correctly to the foot here is a little bit 
off still. Perfect. All right. So there's like our kind of like makeshift uh, shadow so far. We're mm -hmm. just still gonna have to go in here at the front and just darken this area, but that's uh, that's something that we can do with that with a brush. So nice. we're gonna keep that right now, and then I'm going to just increase some of the levels on this character just to give it some more contrast mm -hmm. to match with the uh, the roof here. Yeah. And then this whole side, since it's literally like a high, like light is shining directly on his back, it's this is all going to be based like completely highlighted. Mm -hmm. so I'm going to clip mask again. I'm always clip masking my lighting because it just uh, works a lot better. Yeah, more efficient, faster. Oh, Fresh Geek is in the chat. What's up, Fresh Geek? Nice. And we also have Adobe Live in the chat. Hey, Adobe Live. <laughs> oh, Adobe Live in the chat, too? Oh, nice. <laughs> Everybody in the chat. Yeah. Today. I'm curious to see um, how you're going to create the highlight. Everybody has different methods. Yeah, so that's uh, that's basically what, I, what I'm what i going to do right there is uh, almost that. Uh, it's it's kind of similar. Like, it's really close to what it actually is. Uh, what it actually is. So I'm just going to go through here now and just kind of fix the bottom of the shoe. And it's it's pretty close to it matching its actual lighting already. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to worry like too much. But yeah, down here on the shoe just needs to be a little bit more. So I'm going to make my brush down to, mm, let's go down to 10% again. There's no like, there's no random, um, like there's no secret to what I'm doing, like behind like <laughs> selecting like a, a opacity or anything. Yeah. I'm literally just picking a random number and going with it. Oh um, come on, Sean, show us your secrets, man. Come on. <laughs> show us your secrets, yeah. This is me showing my secrets. <laughs> this is all the this is all the the good stuff right here. <laughs> this is all the stuff that I will uh will make you edit really fast. But um but yeah, so we're, now we're just going to go in here with just some more. Uh, th actually, no, this is all highlights down here. I don't know why I just shadowed that. Right, yeah, down here is definitely all highlights for sure. Yeah, so it looks like we got some new people in the chat that are asking about Pixel Squid. Do you want to give another quick, quick, like 10 oh, second yeah. explanation yeah, of no, what that of is? Yeah, no, yeah, so Pixel Squid, let me just uh, let me show. Actually, let me just show a full example of what its capabilities are, because I do edit fast, so we do have some time. Um, let's go into my anxiety folder there and grab this balloon. Perfect. <laughs> For some reason, I titled it. I, I might have been working on like an anxiety piece, I think, <laughs> at some point. But uh, yeah, so this is like, oh, actually, no, the balloon was a bad idea because it, it's a sphere. So let's grab <laughs> this guy so that I can actually show you the rotation of it. Yeah. So this is like Pixel Squid. So it imports um, 3D elements into your project. This is low quality right now because I have it set to low for speed purposes. All these elements that I have in right here are, are low quality up until I am happy with them. Then I make them high quality again. Um, but here's the, the capability. So you can literally rotate it at whatever angle that you want this element to be at. You can throw them in here if you mm -hmm. want now. You can just run, have them running through here. It just gives you the, the capabilities to um, add elements inside your composites um, when you are like when you don't want to like let's just say cut out another plant, right? Mm -hmm. You don't want to you don't want to cut out a ladder or all that kind of stuff or uh, some small things from images. So this really helps with like just hey you're looking for a, a shovel then yeah you, you can find a shovel right it's it's there but if you're gonna look for like let's just say the death star or something you mm -hmm. may not find it. <laughs> so you're better off cutting that one out <laughs> but uh but yeah no it's pre it's pretty useful like i i use it a like a lot um in my designs i actually use it probably for every single one of my pieces now i nice or in the day, I never really, never really did use it for all my pieces. But ever since I discovered it, I was like, "Whoa, yeah, I need to, I need to step, I need to put this in my uh, design process for sure." Nice. I see that Cody Bear just posted the daily Photoshop Challenge Discord page on the chat, so make sure that you click on there so you can submit the work that you created with Paul Tranny this morning. Sean and I will be going through your caricature designs in uh, what are we do? What is that? In about an hour, yeah. 
in about an hour, we're going to be checking those out. Um, cool. Can so I rewatch gonna... it somewhere later? I'm assuming you're talking about this chat, Cornell. If so, uh, this this not chat, this um, this live, this stream. <laughs> if so, then yes, all the streams are recorded, and you can watch them from behands.net slash live. You can also tune into my Behance lives. There you which go. Is, uh, which I literally do all this stuff as well, all the time. Uh, I'm uh, a Behance streamer, so I do that. So uh, how, how do people week. find you there? Uh, you can actually just search uh, Sean Breken, my name, and it, sh it, sh it should pop up. I should be the first one. It's just the pink profile picture there. On um, Behance, you mean? Yeah, on Behance there. Yeah. And, and there, there's a link to it in um, the description here on this. If you're watching this on Behance.net slash live, you know, on the actual embed page on Behance, your Behance profile has a link there, which is Behance.net slash Sean Riken. That simple. Perfect. perfect. That's easy. That's like my catchphrase, I think, is perfect. <laughs> Do you have a catchphrase? Um, I don't know. I probably have things that I say a lot. Well, I say by the way a lot. Um, what ah, yeah. so there's your catchphrase. Uh, well, I don't. I wouldn't. I don't want to consider it a catchphrase. <laughs> but I, like sometimes I watch my videos and I, and I count how many times I say by the way. Oh goodness. And also, I realize that I have a a professional way of speaking, which is not much better than my regular way of speaking, but yep. my right. my regular way of speaking, I say like a lot. Oh, yes. Yeah. That's a huge one for me. Yeah, yeah. I even I, say it in emails. It's bad. Like, I even type it now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <It's bad. laughs> so I'm just kind of going in here with, um... oh, for some reason, the eraser tool. But uh, so I'm just going to go in here with, the black brush and I'm just kind of getting rid of these highlights down at the bottom here to blend the to connect the shadowing. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just kind of like aligning it all the front of this shoe just needs to be a little bit darker. So I'm just fresh I'm just drawing black over it basically. Fresh cake said uh, dude is his catchphrase let us know in the chat what your catchphrase is we got my yeah. good friend rocky montez car in the chat and he goes haha jesus you do that uh what do i do like or by the way or both <laughs> <laughs> they're catching on yeah <laughs> um but yeah I, I used to have the catchphrase um i used to say medium rare a lot Medium what? <clears throat> Medium rare. Medium so rare. I, yeah. So and and what I meant by that is, uh, whenever I said something was medium rare, I would mm -hmm. I would basically be saying like that it's average. Oh, that it's, okay. Like, yeah. You know, that, it's medium rare. <laughs> eh, medium rare. It's yeah. it, it's. I'm, feel, I'm feeling it, but like you know, <laughs> I mean, I'm in in the middle of it, right? Yeah. Like, I'm not gonna order something fancy, and I'm not ordering something other than like lower than fancy or whatever. Steve is saying that I should change it to just one more thing. Just one more thing. <laughs> Cody Bear says, um, <clears throat> I totally, wait, I say totally a lot. <laughs> Carol says, honestly, a lot. <laughs> Rocky said both. Yeah, Rocky, I know I say both like and by the way. <laughs> and then Rocky said, I never noticed till you mentioned it. <laughs> A1 hot sauce, <laughs> that's what Derek says. Sharon says basically. I, I think I say basically often as well. Yeah. Yeah, basically is a big one. Yeah. Especially on my YouTube videos, I'll often cut out words because sometimes I'll say, okay, so basically what you want to do, and I'm like, why do I say <laughs> basically? <laughs> like, so I sometimes do edit out words like that if, if it sounds good when I edit it. <clears throat> so I'm going to um, darken the, the mirror because um, your subject is now um, in front of it, so, mm -hmm. and the light is behind your subject. So you, the element basically is is being blocked by that person here. So the light hits that person, mm -hmm. and then like it's not going to reflect onto the mirror. So I I lowered this so that I can easily go in now and heighten the highlights on either side, but match the center. Mm -hmm. I normally make my elements always darker. I never make them lighter. 
Nice. Um, shout out to my friend Andrea in the chat. How's it going? Or Andrea? I'm sorry. Like I, <laughs> I, I have a, a friend uh, here named An Andrea, but I call her Andrea. So when I read it, it it triggered my friend here, Andrea, not Andrea. My bad. <laughs> sorry. Um, Oh, Steve is saying that he liked my video review for the BenQ monitor. That looks good. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, I, I really like that monitor. I've been using it for about five months now. It's the uh, BenQ uh, PD3220U designer monitor. It's like this giant 4K monitor with 100% um, sRGB, and it looks fantastic. So if you guys are looking for a cool uh, monitor for your photography or design, that's a nice one. I really, really like it. How many hertz does it have? Uh, that's the thing. If you're if you're a gamer, it's not going to be for you. It's designed for for um, perf uh, it's not designed for speed. It's designed for color. So oh, okay. That yeah. So it's not not your. Um, if you're a gamer, you're gonna have to think about that. But if you're into um, if color is important to you, then that's that's something that you you may want to consider a monitor. You may want to consider. Yeah, I just uh, I just currently use that uh, a curved monitor actually. And um, it's so different. It's so different from using a regular monitor. It is. It throws me off so much. Um, and I think it's. I. I don't know why, but I. Th it could just be because like my eyes are a little bit uh, weak. Like one of my eyes actually doesn't work. So this one doesn't work at all. Oh wow. Um, yeah. So I'm literally only doing this with one eye. <laughs> um, but yeah, it does. It's it hasn't worked ever since I was like born. Basically, it's not mm -hmm. lazy or anything. Like it, like it moves. I just can't see anything out of it. Right, right. Um, so so yeah, I've just been kind of uh, with the curve monitor. I think that's what's really throwing my uh, vision off right now. Mm -hmm. Is the fact that one of my eyes doesn't work and I'm using a curve monitor. <laughs> oh wow. Right now, I'm just doing the highlights. Right, like uh, it's just a little bit of a tedious process sometimes. So uh -huh. I'm just slowly uh working them in um as i'm visualizing it mm -hmm. so there's not really like i don't really have like a set system for doing this right now i'm just kind of shooting in the dark with my eyes and, and looking uh at the overall composite rather than just that one element right now. right right so that's how i kind of blend things is i look i look further than the element mm -hmm. and then it, it allows me it really helps me with like blending and all that so i'm going to remove all the shadows off of this thing because they give you like the weirdest shadows with mm -hmm. it. susan wrote me too sean i have a lazy eye oh perfect yeah see so we're one eye, we're, it's, let's just trade eyes like we can just <laughs> <laughs> one good work Wait, well, that, that, that means that one person will have perfect vision and the other one wouldn't well, be able to see like a <laughs> we can just have a schedule right like who's, yeah. who's Who's weak is it with, yeah. with the good pair, and who's weak is it weak is it with a bad pair? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I used to not be able to see very well after I had LASIK, and my God, it, it completely changed my life. It's crazy how, like, I went from you know needing glasses, like I couldn't see past my hand basically, and then now it's perfect. Oh wow! Yeah, no, I uh, I wish I could do that, but I I, I can't even use. Um, contacts basically because oh. one of my eyes is is overly it, dominant basically it looks like i went away um let me let me see why my camera is not working sorry about that guys i'll be right back oh yeah this is this is so the, Sean, the i'll leave it up to you for just a second let me try to troubleshoot yeah no worries i have camera. the chat open yep. anyway so i can just uh i can still read um yeah, so we're, we're I'm just going in here and fixing up um, all like the shadows now, bas basically. So I'm I'm fixing up the rough edges around here and what wouldn't have actually been there because I'm going to be redrawing um, this shadow for the mirror, and since it's a very dark shadow and going to be taking up a lot of this corner over here, um, we're just now kind of just. Um, we're erasing it so that this shadow does not overlap with the other um, other shadows. So I'm just going to, I just noticed that the perspective of this mirror is a little bit off. So let me just fix that slightly. And I'm just gonna go inside um, the perspective warp here and I'm just gonna bring this kind of up a 
we'll tap it. All right, guys, I'm back. That was weird. For some reason, my camera just decided to turn itself Welcome off. back. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going over um, just the shadowing right now, just uh, how, why we are kind of erasing um, in here. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and then just I edited the perspective a little. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm back, Paul. Can't, can't be throwing paper airplanes while I'm now, now that I'm back. <laughs> I hope you guys behaved. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna just keep it at that for now. That looks good. And then for this shadow, I think I'm just gonna draw it in with the the best that I possibly can, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> because you can't really grab this element and put this one down. Oh, I went to the top of the screen, but uh, you can't actually grab this this element and flip it and and have that same perspective. Mm -hmm. I could possibly what I actually could do though. Now that I have pixel squid here, I could possibly just grab another 3D element and then. Oh no, it may, it may not work as well as we want it to, but it was worth a try. Sometimes you might be able to find like something that's almost at its similar perspective, mm -hmm. so you can like warp, make that one its shadow. But yeah. in this sense, we, we're just gonna have to draw it. So I'm it gonna grab. And sometimes the workaround might be to literally cut up your element into all these different pieces and manipulate them, you know, accordingly. Yeah, and, you know, you'll have to decide if it's easier for you to draw it or easier for you to cut it up. So what? And sometimes you'll do both and realize <laughs> that you spend a whole lot of time uh, doing one and not the other. <laughs> so I'm just, I'm just going to go quickly around here to see if I can... Feel free to work on that. What I'll do is remind everyone to join us at behance.net slash live if you are watching this on YouTube because we can't see your comments. So if you want us to see your comments, make sure that you come into behance.net slash live so that we can interact with you guys in the chat. Also, the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge uh, design feedback will start in about 25 minutes. So make sure that you submit your work um, to the Discord page. You can go to behance.net slash challenge slash Photoshop and click on the join the community chat link to go into Discord. We are very, very excited to see the work that you have created. Paul created a really fun caricature project in Photoshop, so can't wait to see what you guys come up with. <clears throat> uh, thanks for posting the link in the chat there, guys. I, I saw Cody Bear posting the link. Thank you so much. Cool, now I'm just gonna go in with the eraser and just kind of fix up all my mistakes. They're not, uh, like Bob Ross used to say, nah, they're not mistakes, they're happy little accidents. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Good old Bob Ross, best <laughs> advice. And that's why we work non-destructively in Photoshop, because then you can come back and <laughs> yeah. make sure yeah. that there's no issues. That, uh, that undo tool is uh, yeah. useful. Often. Yeah, use your layers, use your history panel, use smart objects when necessary, adjustment layers, layer mass, all that stuff that you can just come back and make changes. You can even use uh, folders personally. Yep, yep. Like, uh, I, like what I normally like to do is, is after um, I've created an element or something like an mm -hmm. overall piece like this. I'll I'll normally just group it, and then I'll color code that right. as orange, like right. so whatever color it is, kind of. So now I know that this is like the mirror. Right, right. <laughs> Jorgen wrote Bob Ross had no eraser. That's right. He was a boss. <laughs> he didn't need an eraser. <laughs> no eraser. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna have to use the eraser. <laughs> By the way, do you ever use that um, that new feature in Photoshop of having the, the brush tool selected and holding down the tilde key, which is right next to the number one on your keyboard under the escape key to toggle to the erase tool? Do you know what I'm talking no. about? So if you have the no. brush tool selected um, and you paint, you'll obviously paint with whatever the foreground color is. But if you instead hold the tilde key, 
which again is to the left of the number one under the escape key, it will toggle to the eraser tool. But the cool thing about it is that you use the brush that you have active on the brush tool. Because if you switch over to the to the eraser tool, you may have a different brush. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's a, it's a brand new feature in Photoshop 2020. So it's uh, one of the best fe one of the features that I use the most in this newer version of Photoshop. I might have it disabled to be totally honest, because or something because uh, I, my hotkeys I use so many. Like I have a Screen mm -hmm. Deck, I have a oh right monitor, right, and I have all of my hotkeys. Yeah, yeah. Keyboard too. Yeah. So sometimes, uh, yeah, that's actually a good point. Um, some, for example, um, I'm not a Mac user, so maybe somebody might correct me in the chat. But I remember when Photoshop changed the um, be before before Control or Command F used to be the shortcut to reapply a filter. Um, now it's the shortcut for search. Um, but sometimes, like the OS search comes up. I think that's the issue, or was the issue. We have Claudie from Print My Soul in the house. Say, hey, Claudie. What is up? How's it going, everybody? Thank you. Wow, we got a, a lot of 820. 828. People. And you guys know me with the likes. Come on, guys. Hit that like button. We only got 22 and 800 <laughs> yeah. of you people here. Really? <laughs> I started doing that a couple of streams ago where I was like, just hit that like button. I like to see that number go up. That hit that like button. Yeah, I, I wish I could. Uh... I mean, as far as I know, there's like no benefit to you or me, but I just like seeing that number go up. And then uh, I think it was um, Tim uh, who was in the chat and he said something like, oh, you're just a typical YouTuber asking people to hit the like button. <laughs> <laughs> YouTuber, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's, it's that YouTube uh, ecosystem they get you. <laughs> that, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, I, I was going to go on YouTube like a long time ago, but I decided that like live streaming was a better a better idea yeah um and so far it's uh, like live streaming has been absolutely fun so i haven't really uh looked back on it ever um i haven't brought any of my content to youtube but mm -hmm. it is it is highly like a lot of people recommend it to me yeah 100 percent. yeah i'm gonna have to ask the moderators to remove cloudy from print my soul for not speaking in english in the chat no, just, <laughs> just kidding <laughs> Her, her her mom actually got uh, kicked out once. Claudie's mom was in the chat. <laughs> yeah, and she got removed. Oh, that's funny. Oh, man. Yeah, that, that happens. All right. Yeah, that happens. So I'm just creating another shadow layer. My layers are all over the place. I, I cannot vouch in any way for naming your layers. <laughs> I I am the worst at it. I cannot. I can't even tell people to name their layers because I I personally don't like. I I'm bad. At it. Like, I I'm just... I have to tell you guys. Please name your layers. Like, I guess you know. Um, if you are someone who has always worked on projects on your own and you never share your PSDs, I can understand that not naming your layers is, is okay. I, there's still, I still will make an argument I, I, you know, for naming your layers, but I can almost understand it. But if you're someone who, ha if you ever share your PSD with somebody else, please name your layers. I, I, there's been so many times. Oh yeah. I, I used to, my first, job <laughs> at, my first job out of college was, um, I was the designer for Motorola, so we shared PSDs all the time. And I just hated getting PSDs that were a mess, you know, like, very you, true. Yeah. You, you couldn't. If, if, you, yeah, if I'm gonna send my like PSD to um, like a client, I go in after and then I then I name it all. But if I uh, if I'm if I'm just keeping it to myself, oh, I keep that. I keep it all like this. <laughs> it looks like the group one, group two, group three. Right, right. But I think it's just because like yeah, I I know my pieces and I know that they're not getting anywhere else other than right. my lot. So. Right. But yeah, I had I have to agree. If you are sending it to a a client or anything like that, one hundred percent name your layers. Vanessa, Otherwise, you're gonna get like a lot of emails. Yep. Vanessa Cuevas wrote, "I'm obsessed with organizing my layers." I have a cousin named Vanessa Cuevas. Um, yes. So it's a lot of um, chat about Adobe Max in the chat. So Adobe Max is free online this year. So make sure that you sign up. You can go into max.adobe.com and sign up so you can check out the streams for um, that event. 
Adobe Max is Adobe's creative flagship conference, and this year is online only. Uh, I'll be a speaker there. Claudia from Print My Soul will also be a speaker there, so make sure that you check it out. I'm totally going this year, 100%. Nice. You gotta, especially if it's online and free. I don't know if that question was directed at us, but Carol is asking, why would you send a native file to a client? If that question was for us, um, we usually don't send it to a client, but if you're working like in a, in a you know, production environment with several designers, um, then you know, you're not the only one who's touching that file. So another, like for example, for my specific case is we worked on designs and then the client would need an update a month, a year or years later and you needed to open up the old PSD and oftentimes that designer had either moved on or was working on a different project so somebody else needed to work on it so you mm -hmm. would need to you know open up that old PSD and <laughs> some PSDs were just a mess yeah or if you're just like um, teaching people or something or you're mm -hmm. offering mock-up templates that too is, a, is another client file that you like another uh, working file that you do send to people right 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 And again, I want to remind you guys, in about 15 minutes, we're going to do the design feedback for today's Daily Creative Challenge. Paul worked on this awesome caricature design in Photoshop. So we're going to be reviewing those in about 15 minutes. So make sure that you log into Discord and submit your work. So now let's play with the lighting of the skeleton. We haven't really done that yet. So we're going to just boost the highlights a little bit because it we have to keep in mind that on that side of the room was where all the light was. So an element in the mirror will will still show that lighting. Right now it shows a, a shadow on the side here, which we're probably going to lightly go in and, and remove as well. Uh, the one on the front here is okay, but just this right here is what needs to be basically removed. Mm -hmm. um, anything behind the rib cage and stuff is fine because then it, like, it'll also cause shadows within this area here so that that can be assumed. Um, but yeah, the leg here too, like this, this bone's a little bit too dark here too and on the side here as well for a light source coming from directly behind me. So how I do that now is I'm going to release that clipping mask and then I'm going to create a new clipping mask using this layer here. So I do the control button and I click this layer to select the actual element. And then I'll go back up to my skeleton here. And then with that selection still, I'll go layer mask and then reveal uh, selection so that now it's only showing it's still in the same mirror aspect, but now this is floating on its own. Mm -hmm. So now I can actually clip mask lighting into the skeleton. Nice. This is just layer organization just to keep like, you know, all like to keep things from not combining with other elements. Mm -hmm. Basically, so like to uh, to control the skeleton completely, we can't have it in a clip mask because then I'm not able to clip mask into a clip mask, which would be cool, but like it's just not mm -hmm. not possible yet. Rocky wrote, "Naming files can help your sanity as well. If a client calls up for a file to be altered from six months ago, it helps to spark your memory and get it done faster. Naming layers, rather, yes, naming your layers. That's totally true." Oh yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. And by the way, I, I um, go in after and I name them. Yeah, and see, I just said it. By the way, <laughs> oh. um, that's, we, we, that's my catchphrase. Yeah. <laughs> but I was gonna say, by the way, um, check out Rocky Montes Car on the chat. If you click on his name, it'll take you into his Behance page. He does a lot of awesome, awesome work. In uh, he's out of Vegas. He works with celebrities, casinos, all kind, a bunch of cool stuff. Excellent, excellent. Photoshopper. Actually, he's got a really cool car. Rocky, I don't know if you have a photo of your car on your in your uh, Behance, but he uh, picked me up from the airport once um, when I was in Vegas, and he 
Uh, I was there for Photoshop World, and he, his car uh, has a license plate. I don't even know if I want to name the vanity plate, but it's Photoshop related. Um, I don't know. If I, I don't want people looking him up. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's a Photoshop related vanity license plate. So it's super, super cool. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, my uh, <clears throat> I've seen some pretty cool on like license plates. They're with like names and stuff. Yeah. I've always wanted yeah. to get my own perp, like my last name as like a license yeah, plate or yeah. something. But, uh, it's like for the amount of people that say stuff about it, it's almost not worth the price of getting something custom. Yeah, yeah. But I have considered it at one point. <laughs> <laughs> I think everybody has almost. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, imagine my my name being on my on the back of my car. I think Photoshop uh, see, would be pretty cool so too. I, so I think um, that Rocky posted his license plate on the chat. So now people are gonna like look him up, figure out his address, and knock on his door a little later on. <laughs> yeah, I would probably remove that man. <laughs> <laughs> what's uh, what street that you grew up in, Rocky? And uh, I forgot. What is your mom's maiden name? And <laughs> and then the student ID. It says yeah. here. At, yeah. Here at <laughs> I'm just adjusting. Now I'm just doing like tedious, the small, like my smaller stuff uh, with the lighting, going around just the frame edges. Cause I noticed that like it is, it will be lighter here on the side. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going in with like a 15% opacity brush, like right. very weak. But it helps with like light, lighting up like edges and stuff just to put a, a nice white over them. All right, there we go. Yeah, I do that whole looking really close on the on the monitor thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Auto when one of your eyes is slacking. Do you ever use the uh, view flip horizontal feature? No, I, d I don't. And I know that like a lot of people when they're editing on like the iPad and stuff, they like to flip perspectives in their pieces, but I haven't really ever yeah. toggled any like i i love to just design in the eight and a half or yeah eight by ten ratio that's my go-to at all times mm -hmm. i always do eight by ten nice <clears throat> so i'm just going in through here now and i'm going to fix um this lighting Ooh. i just scooped but okay <laughs> um <laughs> Um, but yeah, I've got to fix this lighting. It, this is, should be all, all bright. So somewhere in here is where I have. Huh. If only there was a feature in Photoshop that would allow you to <laughs> name, them, name really layers so that you could easily find them. I actually didn't even go in that area yet. So that's good. <laughs> so but you know what? You, you at least color your layers. You know what I mean? Yeah, I folder them. So it's like I, I still do something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm still taking part somewhat in the organization, but I, I cannot vouch for it in any way. I'll tell you. Right, that. right. All right, guys, we got about seven minutes for the design feedback. So make sure that you submit Ooh. your work on to Behance. I'm there uh, on Discord, sorry. I'm there now and. I'm starting to see some projects pop up, but I'd like to see you more than what's there now. So make sure that you submit your work. Oh, one just another one just popped up. I don't know if you're in the yeah, chat, keep, AJ, keep but thank around. you for submitting your projects. So we're gonna be reviewing those in about six minutes now. So behance.net slash challenge slash Photoshop and click on the join the community link and that'll take you onto Discord. In the left hand side, you'll have the current challenge have and that's where we will be reviewing your work also if you're watching on youtube now make sure that you come over into behance.net slash live behance.net slash live so that we could see your comments we can see your comments if you are on youtube and we have 918 people watching holy sean so send this link over to your friends let's try to get it over to an even thousand <laughs> yeah then, yeah keep keep going let's keep climbing yeah Let's get into the 1K club. Yeah. 
I think this would be like my my most because I was in on Adobe Live last 2018. I think. Yeah, 2018. I believe mm -hmm. I was on live. No, 2019. I lied. Uh, yeah, 2019, and I think it was around. We got around 900, which is pretty good. That lighting is wrong. So, you know, sometimes one of the questions, Sean, is what did you do? Like a skeleton inside? You can just um, give us like a super quick um, reminder of what you did in there. Oh, what I did in there? Yeah, sure. Uh, okay, so what I did was, uh, one sec, let me just do a small little thing before I forget. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Okay, so what I basically did was we created, um, let me just compress my layers here to show you a little bit better. Okay, so what we basically did with the mirror was we completely uh, added that element in there. Um, so it was a blank. Let's go all the way down here. I'm just going to do one of my like little process kind of mm -hmm. build-ups. There's that word again that I, that I struggle with. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we talked about <laughs> that last night. Process, yeah. Um, so... So here's the mirror that we basically got um, with uh, Pixel Squid here. Mm -hmm. So this is a 3D um, uh, plugin that you can use in Photoshop. And what it does is it allows you to rotate elements at any perspective, well, almost any perspective that you want. And it matches mostly, mostly every average perspective. OK. Um, and then we've kind of, what we did was we added a element in front here to um, start clipping our elements into because we wanted to make a reflection of this mirror because mirrors reflect. Right. So, um, so we grabbed the corner of this room over here and flipped it and then put it in here to create kind of like that other side of the room perspective. Because you're going to see a different angle because you're looking at like behind you, right? So that's right. what we want to create is that like fake look behind. Mm -hmm. uh, you wouldn't see this again. So if you clip that at the same angle, then it looks unnatural because it's almost matching the background too much that it looks, yeah, it just looks like it's it's pasted in there. I see. So then we added our, our skeleton here to match his perspective. And uh, we're just trying to create a composite um, about uh, reflection. But the plugin's name is um, Pixel Squid. You can just you can just go to pixelsquid.com and just uh, check it out there. They have a huge library. And uh, yeah, the Photoshop plugin is uh, definitely a useful thing. And then we went in after and we adjusted all of our lighting. And uh, and now we're we're here. Oh well, and then we also added that uh, the guy standing, mm -hmm. uh, and then we did a a little bit of his lighting adjustments. But uh, it's getting pretty pretty close to um, to the lighting that we need. Just this this area right here is really dark, and this area right here is pretty dark for lighting coming from behind them. So we'll adjust that. Mm -hmm. uh, a little bit later but yeah this is kind of like what we're getting at right now i'm just quickly working on on the the shadowing of the mirror here so we're just drawing on extra shadows to match that perspective again. right right and by the way guys the uh design feedback is actually 30 minutes from now i was i had the wrong time in my head 30 minutes from now so you still have 30 minutes an extra 30 minutes more than i thought to submit your work so behance.net slash challenge slash photoshop click on the join the community chat link and submit your work into discord under community or current challenge current challenge and that will be at 11 a.m pacific and then we can um check out the work that you did with the caricature design that paul tranny showed us this morning carol is saying that i am wearing a jacket uh, yes, it is hot, and I am wearing a jacket. Or it's not a jacket; it's like a you know, like a long sleeve type of thing. And I always like to wear long sleeve shirts, so 
even if it's hot, sometimes I wear long sleeve stuff. I, I, as soon as it gets like above 10 degrees in Canada, I'm in like t-shirts, t-shirt and shorts. <laughs> nice. I, like, I, as soon as we get that snow off the ground, I'm like, oh, it's summer. Great. We're here. <laughs> like, let's go. <laughs> but it's just, I think we're just, yeah, I'm just so used to like, um, just that snow weather. For so sure. ridiculous. It's all over the place. You got to wipe off your car all the time. And, uh, yeah. Uh, Sergio is asking the name of the plugin that uh, Sean is using is Pixel Squid. Pixel Squid, Pixel Squid, right? If they're making it right. Pixel yeah. Squid, yep. Pixel Squid, yeah. And you were saying that the the other day uh, that you discovered Pixel Squid too. How did you end up coming across Pixel Squid? They actually reached out to me, and they were oh. op offering me. Um, just to try it out and, and see if I like it. Um, oh. As you could imagine, as a YouTuber, I, I, marketing teams for different companies reach out and, and offer me things. And oh, most yeah. of the time I say no, just because it's, unless I use it or I think it has any value, I don't even want to, you know, spend my time with it. But, yeah, exactly. you know, they they reached out. Actually, um, they, they reached out because a good friend of mine, Lisa Carney, who I did a stream with, um, works with them. And she oh. mentioned my name to them, so that's that's how how they came across me. That's really cool. Yeah, it, it's uh, definitely <laughs> a super friendly uh, company. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I I'm in a similar boat with you too. Like, I don't like to falsely represent things that I'm not going to yeah. use or anything like that. Like, yeah. Uh, I mean. I do um, I think it was Steve who was mentioning in the sh chat earlier about my BenQ review. That was the first product review I've ever done on my YouTube channel. And I only did it after like five months of using the product. And my stipulation was, is you can't tell me what to say. I'm saying what, because they, they, to be completely open, they sent me the monitor to try it out. Um, and I was like, all right, well, then I'll make the video when I want and I'll say whatever I want. Otherwise, I won't do it. And they agreed to it. So cool. Wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, they want you like because they know that it's good. Like, it, like I've always, uh, I, I've always wanted a BenQ monitor. The only thing is that, like, in in Canada, it's pretty expensive for mm -hmm. me to get just a product in general. Like, mm -hmm. very expensive. Um. So yeah, with that kind of stuff, like I, uh, I always think, is it really worth it for me to go and 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 spend like thousands of dollars mm -hmm. on, a, on a monitor that's hard for me to get in this area right right mm -hmm. yeah because they're a, a european company right they i don't know to be frank with you yeah I'm, i don't know where, where their uh, headquarter i know that the uh, american headquarters are in texas i know that much but i don't think they're a, an american company Nice. So working on those fine details with the shadows. Oh yeah. Well, it's just like the legs, right? So that's the only part that I'm going to have an issue with is, is just the legs because these are added weird perspective for right. me to to actually see. Right. Steve is saying that things are super spendy in New Zealand. If you think Canada super is super spendy, spendy. I like that yeah. term. Yeah. <laughs> that's a uh, Steve's catchphrase. <laughs> Super spendy. <laughs> yeah, that's a good catchphrase. Yeah, I mean we have uh, probably double the people in the stream than when we first asked the question. Holy. But what is the um, your catchphrase? We said that mine was by the way and like. I say like a lot. What was your Mine, suggestion? Mine's gonna. I'm gonna say mine's medium rare. Medium rare, right? Medium, medium rare. rare. Because I think that I say that too much as as like an average yeah. thing. Yeah. Just, yeah, I would say that. Or perfect. Or Same perfect. perfect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, perfect. BenQ is in Taiwan. Yes, Steve. Thank you for that. It is in Taiwan. Taiwan okay. Yeah, yeah. They do have a, a European location, I'm pretty sure, too. I, yeah. I, uh, that's the one that I was um, 
that's the one that I follow a lot on all their right. pages. Yeah, I think they have it for all the different regions mm -hmm. or whatever. Right, right. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm I'm done playing. Oh, my with this. cam! Something's going on with my camera. It went away again. Let me let me see what the deal is with that. <laughs> it's because uh, you're not using the 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 cam lens. Are you using the cam lens? All right, perfect. There we go. Now that now it should be fine. Like that shadow, it should work out. People. Uh, We'll see it as that. I'm gonna kind of go darker in here though a little bit because this uh, this will not peek in in there at all. So I'm just gonna fill that up. That is so weird. We had a you and I had a conversation last night. It was about what almost three hours, and no camera issues. And now, I know it's, it's so uh, weird. Yeah, we had a long con. Yeah, we were just talking. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it was all fine yesterday. It's so weird. Technology, right? Like yep. it can work yep. one second and then like the next second yeah. it's just no, oh, I'm out of here and I'm done. Yep, yep. Love from India. Yeah. Thank you guys. Love from all over the world. <laughs> I'm with you, Keith. I want Wacom to send me some things to try out. <laughs> <laughs> Check out Dimension. Yeah, yeah. I need to. Uh, I need to get into Dimensions. To be totally honest, I've, I've been. I've had my eyes on it for so long now, and I and I tell myself all the time, "Oh, Sean, yeah, get into it, get into it." But then I, I just, <laughs> I'm so focused on Photoshop now that like mm -hmm. I, I haven't, uh, I haven't opened up to any other software. Right. Right. Yeah. I'll get there. I'm sure it's uh it, it it's such a great application. It gives you great results. It's just really really cool. I I highly like recommend a, it. One, it's like like oh dimensions. Yeah, it's yeah. it's like um it would be almost like pic, pixel squid somewhat, right? Like where um <clears throat> like you could just import your elements and move them at whatever. Uh, yeah, whatever. yeah. So you can import 3D uh, OBJs from any 3D application or import 3D models from Adobe Stock. You can even create 3D models in Photoshop, although they're just extrusions of, you know, kind of like a cookie dough cutter type of thing where you push like cookie dough through like a shape and then it, you know, extrudes it. So you could do an OVJ like that in Photoshop and then import it into um, Dimension. But the point is, is that Dimension brings in 3D elements and you can apply materials to them. And it's super cool because you were talking about perspective earlier when you were trying to match the shadows and all of that. So Dimension uses Adobe Sensei, which is artificial intelligence, machine learning technology that analyzes the image and it finds a perspective for you. So then the ground plane and the shadows and the lighting and all that just, just happens automatically. So it's super cool. Wow. And that is <laughs> something you want, <laughs> for yeah. sure. Otherwise, I'm looking like this. I'm just trying to see what that perspective is. Yeah, Dimension. Project Felix was the, the working number. I, I did a, um, a presentation on it. I, Adobe sent me to um, Sydney, Australia for the Adobe Make It conference about, I don't know, two or three years ago. And I did a presentation on, on it, but it was Project Felix at the time, and it didn't have all the features it has now. It's much, much better now. Project Felix. Yeah, I heard about that uh, yeah. That name. That's, that name rings a bell like big time for me. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, it was branded as Dimension when it had its final release or its, its public release. So look at the difference of this, like shadows. No shadows. <laughs> no shadows. <laughs> nice. And that's me literally going over it with a 15% brush, right? Like nobody's, and when I do the camera raw, it's going to like mm -hmm. keep that value, right? As, right? as a higher value rather than a lower. Right, right, right. So like in here, you know, you're going to want to, I'm going to probably go a little bit lower, like even more tedious, like 3%. Uh -huh. <laughs> I know it's like that's really low, but that's what I work with, honestly. It's, right. Because uh, I, I, 
I can technically say that I'm almost like an illustrator, but I only illustrate light. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. And then I'm going to go in here now just to correct the actual shadows. And just a small stuff. Yeah, you got to get into those details, man. Yeah, the smaller, just this, the little tiny stuff. Like, even on the mirror, personally, I'm probably going to add, like, like finger smudges, right? Like, mm -hmm. when do you ever see a mirror that doesn't have finger smudges mm -hmm. on it? Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> that's what I'm probably going to do. I'm just going to darken um, my uh, mirror a bit. So, I'm just going to take down that hue and saturation. Actually, you know what? I just realized... I'm using a smart object, so I've already accidentally created two um, hue and saturation. When right. you have a smart element, it it is basically non-destructive, so it mm -hmm. allows you to just like delete it and remove or and remove it at any time or enhance right. it again. So beneficial. And we got the okay, the, the design feedback coming up in twenty minutes. Beautiful. Yeah. So make sure you submit now your work. Now it's the actual. Time. Now this is the actual time. Yeah. It'll be up. Uh, there's a link right now in the chat. Thank you, Cody Bear, for posting that. We'll be checking out the Daily Creative Challenge uh, art on Discord. So make sure you submit your work there. It's the link is on the chat. And a mirror will always create somewhat of a gloss. So I uh, I put that gloss over the the skeleton now. Mm -hmm. In uh, I'm gonna actually I'm just gonna put this down to like twenty or so maybe. Yeah, twenty. There. So this is the before, a little heavy, pretty heavy in contrast. After mm -hmm. mirror, right now it looks nice. like a mirror. Perfect. And then um, and then yeah, basically now let's just grab all of these. <clears throat> And then I'm going to merge it all down. Destructive, I know, mm -hmm. but uh, it's literally the only way to apply um, a uh, camera raw filter on your object. So I'm going to make this uh, into uh, a smart object again. Mm -hmm. And by the way, thanks, guys, for I'm guessing people did submit the or share the link to the stream with their friends. We're at 1,100 now, 1,122 wow. people watching. So thank you so much. Wow. Let's see. We're, we're going to have to try and top this one tomorrow. We're going to do it. <laughs> yeah, Let's sorry. see if we can get the 2K club. Yeah, yeah. We'll uh, get everyone to get one friend to watch. <laughs> yeah, everybody, or even your parents. Like, yeah. send it to your yeah. parents if yeah. you want. They yeah. might be interested in, in a picture like this. Yeah, Who knows? yeah. And if you have like, you know, like three or four devices, why don't I just turn all of them on and watch? <laughs> yeah, just, <laughs> yeah. yeah, just tune in on all different accounts. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's funny. Yeah, Keith, but only 43 likes. What, what's going on with that? We need more likes. <laughs> yeah, go, go, give, us a, give us a thumbs up. <laughs> Yeah, so camera raw does take me a little bit while, like a little time to open up sometimes because you know it's mm -hmm. it's doing the whole image now and our, our canvas is a little bit big. So right, um, and adding you know all this uh, fancy stuff in here, it actually does like increase the file size pretty big. So what I normally like to do is I I always just go right like add a little bit of clarity in there. Mm -hmm. For, I'm pretty sure everybody goes right for the clarity thing in in, in camera raw first, anyways. <laughs> Claudia's saying that she's going to get her parents on. <laughs> then they're usually, they're, they're usually in the chat for her streams. They do show up. And like I said, her mom got kicked out in the, uh, the chat because she kept typing in Italian. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just going to boost all the highlights in here and everything. Perfect. There we go. Uh, just going to tone down those blacks. Okay, 
space. This is going to be the dark corner over here, and this is going to be the light corner. All right, perfect. So now I'm going to just start playing around with colors. So colors that I don't want in here sometimes, I, I just kind of saturate them a little bit. Um, let's just get rid of like a little bit of oranges in here. They're too, too harsh. The reds in the background all the way back there, I'm going to put those down too right here. And then I believe that's also magenta or purple, maybe. I don't really know what's making this color up here right now. But let's go into luminance here. And now I'm just going to fix the oranges a bit. Carol wrote, uh, Claudia, if your mom comes into the chat again, she needs to share lasagna. Actually, lasagna, Claudia's yeah, yeah. mom makes this, yeah. I don't even know what it is, but she makes this like lasagna that's so good. And it's like, I mean, maybe Claudia would put on the chat what it is, but it wasn't like the, you know, like the typical, um, like you know, subscribe for lasagna. Yeah. Oh my God. It was, <laughs> it was amazing. Yeah. But so, okay. So I'm going to basically make it like that. So camera raw is just beautiful. Mm -hmm. Like you're, you're going to notice like the difference. It, it makes a huge step in your in your work mm -hmm. and then i do like an oh now i do the overall lighting of of the elements okay so i'm going to just use my brush at three percent here fine actually no let's 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 be on the let's live on the edgy side and let's go up to eight percent Ooh! wow <laughs> yeah living, a, living life dangerously there my friend yeah. just for today though just for today I'm okay because i'm feeling a little bit yeah you know just outgoing the, yeah Feeling Risky. a little, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm just uh, putting my my light over here, over the act, this side. I'm blending the overall piece now, uh, rather than uh, each element individually. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna darken this corner again. Let's do a overall overlay sorry and then this one as an overlay as well really really good work <laughs> yeah it's pretty uh, it's 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 turned out pretty good uh so i'm gonna go into the blur gallery here I'm gonna uh, use my good old nice iris blur mm -hmm. and i'm just focusing on that i don't want him in focus he is a little bit blurry already which is good So these are your focal point here. So I'm just going to kind of go right over there. And then mm -hmm. I'm going to stretch this out now. And then bring my focal point back here. Nice. And I'm going to tone down that blur a little too tad bit. And then I'm going to click OK. Cool. Now at this point is when I basically hold uh, the Alt key and then mm -hmm. I click create a new layer. Um, it pulls up this new layer panel so I can easily set overlay and then fill it with that, mm -hmm. that nice, beautiful gray. Nice. Um, so we're going to set that. And then this is what I use as my burn and dodge now for my final pieces. So um, I'll go in with a little bit higher. Like we're going to live on, on the right on the edge now. We're, we're going to really. <laughs> But um, so we're going to go up to that and oh, one second. There we go. Marsha is asking, do you work in Lightroom? I, uh, I personally don't really work in Lightroom too often. I find that almost like, um, you know, the stuff that I can accomplish in, that I would use Lightroom for and accomplish in, in Lightroom, I can already do in Photoshop. Mm -hmm. And um, like we were talking about yesterday, we, we uh, almost find them to be pretty similar, those, yeah. those softwares. And yeah. they are kind of similar. They are. they are. So Lightroom is built on the Camera Raw engine. So, you know, in terms oh, of okay. editing the photo, they're exactly the same. Lightroom does offer, uh, so there's two Lightrooms. There's Lightroom Classic and Lightroom based in the cloud, which is just Lightroom now. It used to be called Lightroom CC. It's just Lightroom now. But um, they each offer capabilities 
that will benefit you in terms of organization or backing up your photos in the cloud and things like that. But in terms of editing the photo itself, it's, you know, camera raw. So camera raw will do that. Um, anything that Lightroom can do, camera raw can do as well. So they're vir yeah. virtually the same in, in, in that aspect. Obviously the organizational and cataloging capabilities of classic are amazing and great. If you're like a photo, uh, you know, like an event photographer or something like that, where you have, thousands of photos to develop that, you know, in Photoshop, it just wouldn't make any sense to do. I, I would say though, I would 100% say that I do like the um, Lightroom at, like app for mobile mm -hmm. over, uh, yeah. over the Photoshop for, yeah. right now, yeah. right now. Yeah. Because there's not really any masking right now in the, in the um, right one yet, I don't think, but um, and that, yeah. yeah, I mean, Photoshop for the iPad is, is pretty cool, but in terms of like your mobile device, I agree with you. Yeah. Yeah, there's just, it's, it will get there 100%. Once, once uh, clipping masks, and well, clipping masks, they actually just, oh put my on God. There. So the, the camera issue again. Sorry, guys. I'm, I really got to see what the issue is with that. Um, be right back, Sean. Yeah, no worries. So right now I'm just kind of going in and just fixing. I'm just doing my burn and dodge. This is this is basically like my my last process that I would do before um, before I hit, like submit the edit to my social channels, all that. I go in and just fix everything, right? Because you're not going to get everything at at its true perspective at all times. So you're better off just you know going in here and and doing the good old burn burn and dodge uh, technique. Pixel Squid can really save your comps. Yeah, ex exactly, right? Pixel Squid 100% can make like your like speed your work process up one like to the max. Um like I didn't have to cut out any of these elements, right? So like that just saved me like 4 hour almost 4 hours probably, right? Like I would have to cut out all these bones, all all around all the little rib cages, everything. Oh brutal but yeah it is it is a lifesaver they don't have obviously like everything on there yet but um it's getting close all right guys then again, i'm back again sorry balance pixel squid with like uh, adobe stock and adobe dimensions and then you basically have an entire 3d library anyways mm -hmm. welcome back thank you thank you yeah, that's, uh, I'm, who knows? I'm trying to figure out what the, the issue is, but we'll get it sorted by tomorrow, I'm sure. Perfect. And then, like, yeah, so that's uh, kind of my uh, composite there. Yeah. Um, this is something that I basically uh, would post. Sometimes you can throw, like, a, uh, I make my own, like, LUTs. So sometimes I can throw um, a 3D LUT in there let's see if i have my my folders perfect sorry set there <laughs> sometimes i like to just throw these things on um as an overall color like mm -hmm. this isn't what it's going to be i just have to get back to the layer here yeah a little slow right now uh sergio right. wrote oh so you're not together <laughs> <laughs> nope we are not together yeah carol there's a trap door that adobe keeps uh sending me through under my desk <laughs> so see like it now it like balances the shadows a little bit mm -hmm. more just like you know enhancing that overall contrast makes it look cleaner and nicer but i personally like this is something that i probably would like post at this point right mm -hmm. like I, I i would be happy with it um just down here maybe i would i would fix that front just by the burn and dodge uh, we can easily do that right now to be totally honest yeah, thanks for the reminder, uh, Cody Bear. Five more minutes until the Daily Creative Challenge feedback on Discord. So make sure that you submit your work. The link is in the chat. Also, Perfect. if you're watching on YouTube, make sure that you head over into behance.net slash live so that we can see your comments. We cannot see the YouTube comments, but make sure that we can, uh, if you want to make sure that we can see your comments, you have to come into behance.net slash live. That way we can all interact with each other. And Sean, we're at 1,181 viewers. Ooh, that's a lot. 
Yeah. No pressure, man. Yeah, no pressure <laughs> at all. I, I'm a Canadian. I, I literally talk to people <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> literally <laughs> everywhere. You have you have to talk to people everywhere in Canada. It's just <laughs> it's oh. a thing that we do. Actually, I was just in Canada for the very first time this time last year. Really? Yeah. <laughs> How did you like it? How I, did you like the local news? I liked it. I wasn't there for very long. I was there just a the day. I, I was in um, Buffalo, New York, and I crossed over to Canada for a day. And it was nice. I, I liked it a lot. I got to see Niagara Falls. It's great. Yeah, Niagara Falls is uh, definitely a good one. That's a uh, that's not too bad of a drive either. Like I I'm a, I love taking drives personally. Like I'm a I'm a road trip kind of guy. Yeah. And uh, that's yeah, that's not a bad drive actually. It's a yeah. Nice one. Yeah. Sergio wrote, "I found you by accident. Very informative. I'm glad that you um, found us. <laughs> I don't know how you found us, but I'm glad you did. It was probably yeah. I'm glad yeah. Do you glad have you do you have tweets or like a Twitter like?" Do you have a Twitter, Sean? I, I do have a Twitter, yeah, but I, I don't really use it for like art or any. I, I mean, I use it for art, but not really like sharing my pieces or anything or, or updating anybody with any actual information. Mm -hmm. I just kind of like, I just tweet random things, really. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. Whatever comes in, in my mind, I'm just like, yeah, yeah, it seems like a good tweet. I don't really get any like action or anything off of it, really. But yes, I definitely use Twitter. Mm -hmm. I definitely, as it says here, uh, Steve says, well, you need to um, enjoy driving in Canada. Nothing is ever close by. Oh, yeah, that is true. That's the realest thing I've seen all day, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true, though. Like, Canada is so spread out. You're like, hmm. Want to go to the coffee shop? Sure. All right. One hour drive to the left. <laughs> Want to go shop grocery shopping? All right. One hour drive. Yeah, but the... but oh. it's one hour, but there's a di you know it's like a far distance. Like I yeah, need to in, in the Bay Area, I need to go somewhere, and it is an hour, but it's only like two miles away. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 We, that's true. We have my pal Lisa Carney in the house. Hey, Lisa, how are you? Good to see you. Oh, what is up, everybody? Lisa. Yeah, so let me just zoom out here and show you what we've uh, what we've created today so far. Awesome. I'm doing like the final details, but I think it looks pretty good. I think um, it looks fantastic. For one hour, you know, you can't really, you can't complain, right? You so can't it's uh, like, I would definitely edit the, probably the lighting down here again, because mm -hmm. that is definitely where um, like the light direction is coming from. But yep. other than that, like, I'm pretty happy with it. Nice, nice. I can see people saying think? hi what to. I'm sorry, what? What do you think of it? I think it looks great, man. I think you did a fantastic job. I, I, I was going to say something funny, but I don't know who was going to get the, the joke. But I was going to say add a little bit of grain. And the reason that I say that is because I'm, I'm like known for adding just a tiny little bit of grain on everything I do. Oh my gosh, <laughs> add a little bit of grain. Yeah, yeah. you know what? Honestly, that is, I think that that's a thing because there's a, a lot of composite artists nowadays mm -hmm. who add grain to their pictures. Well, like, and, and I'll tell you why I do it at least. Uh, there's certain things that you do when you're Photoshopping. If you're doing anything with blurring, smudging, anything like that, even scaling to a certain degree, you lose a lot of the grain, film that, grain that was in the camera, right? So it looks very digital. You know what I mean? So if you just add a like tiny me. little bit of grain then it, it i feel like it brings it you know do you just um do you just use raw here yeah like yeah exactly grain? exactly and i would just add you know never more than 10 but you know it depends on the, on the image let's let's crank it up to 10. oh we got some chroma in the background there too oh let's get rid of that yeah chromatic aberration <laughs> Lisa wrote, gotta add grain, no doubt. Yep, yeah, for, gotta add grain. <laughs> for those of you that don't know Lisa, make sure that you check check out her work. She is a finisher. I mean, I know I know that sounds like like you know, she's some sort of like martial artist, but she's not. She um <laughs> she does uh she works in the Hollywood industry with movie posters and she's worked on some of my favorite movie posters, including the Spider Man far from home movie posters. So check her out, wow. Lisa. Lisa and I did a stream about a month ago. It's 
uh, it's an awesome one, so check it out. It's here in behance.net slash live. You can just find the Photoshop streams and, and you'll see us on there. Wow, that's pretty cool. I'm gonna tech I'm gonna check that out after the stream. There you go. <laughs> I gotta yeah. for those of you that follow my YouTube channel, I'm I know I'm late on my copycat Wednesday video, <laughs> but I will get that done today and post it a little later on. So that's what I'm gonna do as soon as we're done recording my copycat Wednesday video. And for those of you that don't know, Copycat Wednesday is just a new series I started in my YouTube channel where I recreate either a movie poster, album cover, book cover, or like a style from like, a, you know, Instagram or, or something like that. So that's what I'll be working on as soon as we're done, Sean. Beautiful. And I'm also going to go live again. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah, I decided I'm like, oh, you know what? It is Wednesday, my dudes, and we should be doing lives on Wednesday. So I'm going to just do um, that. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I have a new green screen. So and I'm testing that out. So it's going to be uh, kind of a different live because this is my first live without a, with a green screen. Oh, exciting. Yeah. Well, technically, this is your first live with a green screen. Oh, yeah, technically, actually, tech, yeah. <laughs> Why is it always? It's always Adobe Live that gets my first. <laughs> like last time I was in San Francisco, I think they got a first for something too. It's always on. Nice. It's always first on Adobe. Nice. But yeah, that. That would be something that I'm uh, really happy with, and something that I would uh, that I would probably um, post at that point and be like, "Oh, you know what? This this matches my my editing standards that I normally do." Mm -hmm. I for, like, yeah, g would go in here and there with like Liquify at the end, but that's only because like, you know, at this point I'm just trying to find something else to add to the, right. the image, but like. You know, you can you can either add, you can keep adding and adding and adding, or you can simply just like, you know, um, show something like this, um, and then um, you know we'll uh, and then people are like, oh yeah, you know that looks pretty good. Um, so <laughs> tomorrow we're probably going to um, we're going to work with the same piece, but we're going to do uh, I'm going to bring elements now into the foreground, so it's going to create that depth, and then we're going to bring it onto Behance, and I'll show you how like. Uh, I display my projects on the hands. Nice. Lisa is saying, everybody hit your like button. <laughs> everybody hit your like button. <laughs> awesome. So yeah, it's um, time for the design review feedback for the Daily Creative Challenge. So if you haven't submitted your work, do it now because we're about to go there. We are um, like literally switching over to my screen. Sean, anything you want to show before I switch over or are we ready to go? No, yeah, we're definitely ready to go. Um, basically, just come back tomorrow and then see what uh, what else we can add on this piece, right? Cool. Uh, so let me yeah. switch over into my screen, and there we are with today's challenge. And I'll refresh my Discord page to make sure that I'm looking at all the most recent um, submissions. And let me just go to the top here because I know that Paul submitted his results here. This is what Paul did this morning for the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge. He wrote my quick attempt to make a fun caricature. Good, question mark. And there he is doing a handstand. And um, <laughs> you know what? If your head is that big, it'll be a lot easier to do a headstand because of the lower center gravi oh. gravity. <laughs> <You know? laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> But, but what, what is that shoe size though? Is that like size like twenty five? Yeah, something? yeah. <laughs> well, you gotta you gotta be balanced, right? With a hit that big, you gotta yeah. have you know strong Hopefully enough feet. Balanced. Yeah, Your yeah. Balance kind of thing. Nice. So that was Paul's uh, attempt there, and we're gonna look at the Haman, and there he is. It's Paul Tranny again doing a jump. <laughs> um, <laughs> So a couple of things, I mean, you know, this this is obviously like a caricature and it's stylized and, you know, maybe this is the look that they're going for. So I'm just going to give a couple suggestions, but you can completely disregard them if that's the look that you want. But um, the first thing is the, I could tell that you probably use Puppet Warp to distort the hands. And if arms, if, this, if that's the case, I would be careful with how you rotate the pins because you get that spaghetti look. But again, that, that might be the look you're going for in this case. So 
Um, yeah, I would probably say like if you're doing like character stuff, like character. Ah, I can't even say that word. Character. Ah, <laughs> that's the word that I I cannot yeah. pronounce. <laughs> if you're doing those kind of stuff, um, I would always say like yeah, like elements such as like hands and feet are something that you probably don't want to play with, but you can play with like the upper legs and right. like the upper arms and all that, right? But like, I would say leave leave the hands as they are almost and, and like just so that somebody can still identify it as a human being mm -hmm. and, but yeah like and and normally aren't these pieces that don't they have to have like a like a big head and then like a a small bo body or something or like the head has to be like mm -hmm. ab like aggressively massive <laughs> i'm not sure i had a i had one drawn of me i think like a long time ago and my head was just huge <laughs> <laughs> yeah but I mean, uh, overall, great job. Like, you know, yeah. our, our suggestions are just, you know, our own, you know, small little yeah. designer. Yeah. So stuff, you know, it's a good job. Little... Maybe, maybe work a little bit more on the, on the masking. It looks a little, a little sharp. So maybe I would actually um, feather it just a tiny little bit mm -hmm. and then maybe paint in some hair coming out of Paul's head there. Yeah. And that little, yeah, that 90 degree angle that he's got going on. There. Yeah. Cool. So. Yeah. It looks good. It turned out pretty good. I like the, <laughs> the background. Definitely fits with like the overall jumping outdoor aspect. For sure. Now we have Andrea, or Andrea. I'm not sure. First attempt. I will try a frontal. Uh, what did she write? A frontal one two. Cool. So it's uh the, this dancer doing like a jump split thing. <laughs> and, <laughs> um, I mean it's it, it's. I like it. It's super cool. I would just say for some reason, uh, maybe I liked her head, but maybe her neck mm -hmm. is a little long. I would bring her head down a little bit. Maybe usually you shouldn't, you don't see too much of the neck on these. Oh, yeah. Like, so the, keep the neck like at its original ratio maybe. Yeah. And then, and just expand the actual like head itself. Right. Yeah. Fit down. Cause the neck usually are drawn pretty, uh, pretty thin. Yeah, and yeah. like at, similar like the legs and stuff, right? But it turned out pretty good. I like like the the choice of photos, and I like that you didn't do it in color either. Kind of looks uh, it's an interesting aspect. You yeah. can use the the techniques that we did today with like clip masking, and you can clip mask white into her face, which would match mm -hmm. the same lighting as the dress. Right, right. So that's always a good uh, thing to keep in mind too. Yep. Well, good work the, there. The very, very good work. Mm, that looks really good. Let's see. We got D. Haman. A little more work on my piece to make it look more oh. like an illustration. My apologies in advance to Paul. I think this looks fantastic. Yeah, I like. I personally real. I like. I like this approach that you mm -hmm. did with like than your previous one. Like I know it's just like making it look drawn, but it now it actually symbolizes that work to me so much more that it's drawn. It, it looks really good. It turned out good. Even the coloring and like the lighting, like the tones mm -hmm. that you're using, you ba like balance the colors nicely. It's it's yeah, it's fantastic. There's not much mm -hmm. I could say besides great job. Uh, I like the filters that you applied to the final image, just to you know drive that whole caricature um, feel home. I think it's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I wish I could give you more more thoughts on something, <laughs> yeah. but, but it looks great. I mean, yeah, it's yeah, it just it's just fantastic. So great job. Maybe, there. Saying like, even use like the other feedback that we gave you for the previous one with this effect on it after you might be mm -hmm. able to get another perspective too, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Fantastic work. Let's <clears throat> dive in. AJ. Cool. This one looks I, I like the outline you put on it on this character. I like the I don't. I can't tell if you smoothed it out or you, or what you did about. It. I like that smooth look. Um, yeah, it looks like it's a luminance kind of yeah thing where where it adds like a blur to mm -hmm. the or a surface blur. It a could surface be a blur. Surface. Could be a surface blur. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But excellent job. I'm not sure. I'm not feeling the particles behind them that much. So that's probably like the, the one thing that I would say that I would consider. Yeah, removing. it looks a little bit like like snow to me almost. Yeah, that, that's just, what I would. I, would I just say. feel that it doesn't add to the composite. Yeah. No, for sure. 
And I definitely see that. I mean, this is subjective, but I might move him to the left more to, you know, rule of thirds type of thing because I feel like he's not really in the middle, but he's not really like on the left third either. So maybe just move. But he's also like jumping forward though. So I it's yeah. almost like it shows that motion of him jumping this this way. Right, right, right. So, mm -hmm. but besides yeah. that, I think it looks great. Yeah, Rocky's saying that the outline makes it look like a, like a sticker. Yeah, it definitely does. Oh, yeah, but definitely I, like a sticker. I like that. I feel that, too. Let's see. So we have A. Wood Ward. And, okay, so you know what it might be, uh, Sean? Oh, it is snow. It is, yeah, so it's there. <laughs> this, <laughs> this, this, this character, so the, the person here photoshopped water into it. So we're like, why is that? Why, why are there <laughs> particles there? All right, see, that makes more sense in this. Yeah image um so again just work a little bit more on the masking on his hair maybe a yeah. little on his neck too the the cutouts are just too sharp so i would just definitely focus on on fixing those any other thoughts sean no yeah that's definitely the cutout at, at like at that point i would say is that just yeah just under the chin there a little bit more like blur to it giving you that like depth that it's actually curling around rather mm -hmm. than just pasted Right, right. Pretty good though. Yeah, good job. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Do we have any more? Uh, it looks like this is um, a different challenge, so I'm not really sure what they were doing there. But I'll see if they have some of the some of today's challenges. Mm -hmm. So this one, it looks like they just added a like a little drawing on top of the <laughs> on top of Paul. Yeah, a little <laughs> a little koala illustration. <laughs> yeah. Cool. All right. Yeah, I, I would have just like gone ahead and tried the challenge just to. Um, you know, see if you could do it. But I mean, this looks looks fine. If you're gonna do yeah. something like this, though, I feel like I don't know about you, but I think that I would probably would have like made it more look like a, a quote unquote sticker. You know, maybe add a little bit of shadow. Yeah, or something. I would. I would have tried to do this a similar effect to the photo itself. Yeah, yeah. like match a, match a vector with a vector and a photo right. with. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, Malik wrote, "Paul is sponsored by Laurel Hair Products." <laughs> <laughs> Laurel Air yeah. products. I can see it. <laughs> uh, here, oh, wait, then we got the the this, one here by. Um, wait, is this? Wait, is that? Is that? Um. Yeah, it, that's not Paul, is it? <laughs> Did he Photoshop his face or somebody else's face onto Paul's body? Is that what happened? Yeah, I think so. Similar to the one. Um, up a few they they put like a, a different face on it yeah but i think it does look almost like it belongs so which is kind of cool so yeah you definitely have like the blending down pat almost i think that the lighting also helped a yeah. lot you know oh yeah no for sure 100 percent. and even the goggles right like it really yeah. symbolizes that he's out in nature mm -hmm. actually there i like it and yeah yeah it just looks looks great good job especially the hands good job on the hands yeah, one thing that I would probably say that um, is a little bit off would be the shadow at the very, very bottom. Yeah, it looks like a real, like it looks like a, like a, the screen glitched or something at the, <laughs> a little bit. It, it's just too, too contrasted. I think. Oh my gosh, the camera again. You know, I think it might be. I think the camera's like overheating. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe it's too hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's very true. Yeah. Sorry about that, guys. I think it is a heating issue here. Oh, you disconnected again. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry about that. No problem at all. <laughs> Popeye arms. Yeah, so true. It does definitely give me that like Popeye arms kind of kind of vibe. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think it might be a um, heating issue with these Sony cameras. I heard that was an issue with the Sony cameras. All right, let's move on to the next uh, piece of art here. Uh, we have Mahedi. <laughs> so on this one, I would definitely just work with the liquify. It just it, it feels like it's a little, you know, all over the place. I would just be a little more mindful of how I would distort the image. Sean, I don't know what yeah, you. Yeah, for sure. Like I, yeah, I would definitely like, you know, use it more precise rather than um, just click, click, click kind of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it is it is a really fun tool to work with and then it, it is it's super like you know how you can like warp anything in any aspect but sometimes there's almost like 
uh, too much at an aspect of things, right? Right, right. And yeah. Then even the lighting, uh, or sorry, you didn't, uh, or the crop in between the legs. Yeah, yeah the masking. That yeah. seems interesting too. Yeah. So just pay a little more attention. Not... Yeah, yeah. Just overall, just that, you know, the little that designer picky <laughs> thing. <laughs> Definitely. Mm -hmm. And this is, oh, I'm sorry, I missed the name. This is from Hendrik. And I think he might have put his face or somebody uh, else's face, obviously, onto Paul's mm -hmm. head. And see, like, this one doesn't work as well because the lighting doesn't match as good as the previous example that we were talking about. Yeah. So you could you could make it work um, using some of the techniques that Sean showed today with the, um, you know, adding highlights and dodging and burning and all that sort of stuff to try to make that... Um, the, his face match the scene better you with the even, lighting. Um, you could even just use levels on it, probably. Yeah. yeah. Um, and just crank your highlights up. I think that that's like the would be almost the. You would have to adjust it a little bit because the lighting on the the left side of the face there is a little bit off. But like, mm -hmm. you might almost be able to achieve a pretty realistic look with the levels too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah for sure. For sure. Um, also. There's a little bit of fringing going on on his arms, you know, that white outline. Oh, yeah. And mm -hmm. actually, Lisa Lisa was just in the chat, and I always say this, Lisa's, I, I, every time somebody shows me something in Photoshop, that like a feature, not a workflow, because everybody has their own workflows, obviously, but if there's a feature in Photoshop yeah. that I don't know about, I always get like, what? I cannot believe I didn't know about that. So Lisa, a couple of years ago, showed me um, how to use the minimum and maximum filter. So what I would do is apply the minimum filter to reduce oh. the the fringing. So the minimum and maximum filters expands and contracts the mask. And it has an algorithm that allows you to either focus on roundness. So in this case, that's the algorithm that I would use or focus on like uh, corners and edges, squaredness. So I would run that filter on there to minimize the fringing just mm -hmm. to, to remove that outline. Yeah, no, that's definitely smart. Like, um, I. Yeah, that's uh, that's definitely a good technique to uh, remove that for sure. Oh, it looks like we have uh, uh, another another good technique would be um, literally just hitting delete twice. <laughs> so when you're mm -hmm. uh, when you've selected like an edge, um, just click delete, go back to that selection, click delete again, and it gets rid of that white edge. It just for some reason it misses it the first time and mm -hmm. it gets it the second. Right. And we have this, this is like a, an animated GIF, again, a Woodward, and it looks like they adjusted the luminosity of the image to match better. And I think the, the luminosity matches better when it changes from what they had originally. Um, I probably would keep a little more of the shadows on the side of the face there, but overall, I think it is an improvement. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, for sure. Like it, the definitely the lighting is a, is an improvement, but yeah, for sure, definitely go around the bottom of the of the chin there and just make it look like it's more filtering mm -hmm. into the body, right? Rather than rounded off at the bottom. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah, good. Work. Like a balloon. Yeah. Kinda. Let's see. Do we have any more? Oh, <laughs> not going. Not mad. going mad. <laughs> Great <laughs> job. So yeah, it looks like they used um, the timeline for this in Photoshop to create the animation. I think it, I think it works great. I like it. Mm -hmm. I think it's pretty cool. Like I, I, and I like how you took that like extra leap to add like a little bit of you know personalization to it, mm -hmm. right? Like you did made it into a GIF. That's that's like I think a, yeah, that's like a bar setter. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's fantastic. I like it a lot, and I like how the eye is jumping as well. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Good job. Did a good job on that one for sure. Yeah, good Save job. Save that one. Put that one. Put that one in your gifts on Discord. Then. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you get for sure. A little star in the top corner and. And and by the way, my catchphrase again. By the way, um, remember that we now have a. Is it called galleries? Yeah. So we have uh, behance.net slash galleries slash challenges. So with these challenges, if, if you use the hashtag ps uh, daily challenge on your Behance project under Discoverability, you have an opportunity to be featured in the curated community gallery. So wow. if you create something that's that you're prou proud of and happy, make sure that you submit it into um, Behance and also use that hashtag so you have an opportunity to be featured in either the XD 
Photoshop or Illustrator galleries for the Daily Creative Challenge. So here are the Photoshop challenges and your work could be featured. So make sure that you also follow the gallery so you can see other people's work and make sure that you use that hashtag when you create a proje uh, project. So mm -hmm. obviously for Photoshop, you would use PS Daily Challenge for XD, um, XD Daily Challenge and for Illustrator AI Daily Challenge. So just wanted to point that out because you were saying, you know, submit it onto Discord. Yeah, also submit it onto yeah. the galleries page. And thank you, for Cody sure. Bear, for putting, posting the galleries link in the chat. Cool. So we have uh, this one here by Tunuk. And uh, this is awesome. I, I think it looks a little, um, well, the eyes make it feel like an anime photo, but I like that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Good job on the masking. The hair looks pretty good. Um, only in a couple areas I could tell you could, you know, maybe spend a little more time, but overall it looks it looks pretty good. I actually like that she has this orange feel to her and the blue sky kind of makes her pop a little bit. So good job on that. Any, any thoughts, Sean? I, I just like how they like kind of kept it like simplistic you know they didn't like overdo it or anything like that and right. they just focused on like one aspect of that person right. i think right. it works pretty really well in a sense like even the coloring and everything it works pretty good for sure maybe not the atmosphere to wear a top <laughs> like a tank top but um yeah. but yeah it looks good like overall like i would probably personally like i always take in mind like people's clothing and stuff like that too right like if somebody's wearing like a jacket or something like, right, like right. that and from a colder place and it's just an extra little small detail thing right <laughs> right right yep it looks pretty good so then we have yeah, now this one by uh mia more and on this particular one, I would say I would just work a lot on the on the highlights and shadows. It, it feels like um, you just sort of brushed it maybe with like, I don't know, I'm guessing black and then set it to multiply. I would just work a little more on, on the shadows and highlights. Again, using the similar technique to what Sean used earlier with the um, dodge and burn maybe will give you better results. Yeah, no, for sure. That definitely will. It, it has to do with like your under element right so the element that you're working with below it was too dark and now you're you're trying to compensate uh, compensate for that right so you, you can notice that like when you're trying to compensate compensate for shadows um it starts to become softer and softer and softer so yeah definitely just i would harshen up the edges a lot more and make it more bold mm -hmm. right now it just kind of looks like flat because all the actual detailing in the face was brushed over right right so but i like i love the uh the bowl of fruits on the top of the head for sure that's a that's a good um aspect behind it i'm not sure if that was added prior or after but it looks it looks pretty good like it looks like it actually is sitting on top of the head there yep <laughs> that's and actually yeah it looks like I can't uh, tell if it's like 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 actually in the photo yeah. or like in the photo of her or in the original photo. Yeah, it looks like it I was added on, and then I think this is the the one the last challenge submitted for today's challenge. And I mean, I think it's overall it's pretty good. Um, you know, you took it looks like it's an actual photo. It doesn't look like a composite, mm -hmm. and it looks like you just took the helmet masked it out and then expanded it and scaled it up to make it look like a character and i think it works i don't know if you have any other comments sean no yeah i I, just, I think it works too i think it looks pretty good maybe even try like i would say now try and do this similar thing but like you know without the gear right mm -hmm. i mean like i'm not in, trying to encourage you to ride without your gear but i'm, <laughs> I'm trying to say like you know um like try a picture with um without the gear too right because right. you don't want to limit yourself so if you're used to like ex making like objects bigger you know you're you're going to be more experienced in that aspect and you should really put it more towards like the human traits like you right know, head size and all that because like a uh, expanding a helmet is pretty easy but like expanding a head's not as as easy to achieve so you're saying that you should challenge yourself on the yeah, exactly, photoshop right? daily creative challenge i like that step it even, <laughs> step it even further for a challenge we have right? about yeah. a minute sean so i just want to um first of all say thank you for today's stream it was awesome any any last words before we we head out 
No, I uh, I loved it. And um, oh yeah, yeah, I actually did want to say something. You mentioned Behance earlier about displaying your projects on there in the mm -hmm. new gallery. Um, so tomorrow's stream that we're on, I'm going to be showing you my Behance uh, templates. So definitely tune in for that one because it will it will make mm -hmm. your project like pop awesome. if, you, if you like submit it. So it will help. Awesome. Um, but yeah, recommend it. Yeah. All right, guys. Thank you so much. We'll be back again tomorrow at 9.30 a.m. Pacific. Thank you so much for watching. Um, let me just quickly put up the schedule and let you guys know uh, what's happening today. We started the day with Paul Tranny showing some cool augmented reality. Then Paul Tranny came right back to do the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge and then us Photoshop compositing with Sean Riken. Up next is Julia Masalska for the Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge. And after that, we have Claudia from Print My Soul and Andrew doing a branding and identity stream. Then we have Peter uh, Del Tondo doing Adobe XD Daily Creative Challenge and a draw along with Cal T. Webster right after that at 2.30 p.m. Pacific. And we'll end the day with Boodoo Val and Andrew doing a design off. So it's fun filled day. Thank you guys uh, yeah. so much for, for joining us. <laughs> and um, we'll be back again tomorrow. Make sure to find Sean on Behance. Follow him. He's got a stream coming up. And where can they see you on that stream, Sean? Uh, they can see me on that stream at seanreichen.live, actually. There you and go. <laughs> right on my right on my page. Uh, and we'll be live at uh, 6 to 8 p.m. EST. I'm in, I'm in Canada, so I use Eastern Standard. <laughs> so awesome. Awesome. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be back again tomorrow. Have a wonderful day. Bye. All right. See you, everybody. <laughs>